Number 27. A light ray entering an optical fiber surrounded by air is first refracted and then reflected as shown in the figure. Show that if the fiber is made from crown glass, any incident ray will be totally internally uh, reflected. So basically what they're saying is that we have some incident ray over here. It's going to be then, it's coming from air. Okay, so N1 is going to be air. Uh, then it travels through the crown glass here. All right, so N2 is going to be that value of crown glass. So you go to your table and you look it up, right? Crown glass, here it is, 1.52. Great. So you got 1.52. And one is air, which is about 1, right? All right. So um, this now refracted ray becomes the new incident ray at this boundary. So what we're trying to show here is that any ray that's coming in will be totally internal, internally reflected. In other words, that the... Uh, refracted ray here, all right, after it hits this boundary, the refracted ray must have a value then of 90 degrees, okay? We developed this idea in number 20. Um, what I want to do first then is I want to find this theta 3. I want to find the critical angle, all right, for theta 3. So I'm going to use my critical angle formula that we developed in that uh, number, number 20. All right, it's going to be N2 over N1. Now, now N2 and N1 are always relative, all right, it's always, always relative. The N2 in this problem is always the, uh, let's call it the refracted medium, and N1 is the incident medium, okay? So since I'm finding now, now just be careful, I'm not saying that the, these are just N1, N2, I'm just using the letters that they're using here, okay? Um, so uh, if I take a look at this ray, this is the incident ray, okay? So this incident ray has a certain index of refraction, and the incident ray has an index of refraction that we plug in always on the bottom right, of this formula. So maybe instead of writing N2 and N1, why don't we write maybe refracted part, and this is the incident part, okay? So in other words, uh, for this incident ray, the index of refraction for that incident ray is the crown glass, okay? So theta critical will equal then the sine, inverse sine of 1.51, excuse me, 1.52, and then the refracted ray would have been uh, the, or the medium in which it's refracted. Then remember, it's not really, it's refracted at an angle of 90 degrees, therefore no light ray will pass through, um, and that medium was air. So the index of refraction of air is 1. So what we can do is now calculate this critical angle, all right? So sine, uh, excuse me, inverse sine of 1 over 1.52. So here we got 41 point, I guess 40, 1.14 or so degrees. So uh, basically what this is saying is this is the critical angle, all right, in which um, this is the value for theta 3. So let's erase some of the stuff maybe in the picture. So theta 3 on in here, this angle in here, uh, must be 41.14 degrees in order to cause total internal reflection, all right? Um, if this ray becomes smaller, if the angle becomes smaller, meaning if it becomes, you know, steeper or something like this now, okay, then um, it will pass through, okay, it will pass through. Um, so what we're trying to do now is since I know this critical angle, I know this is basically like the minimum, okay, this is basically the minimum angle. All right, which will cause that internal uh, total internal reflection. Any angle greater than this definitely causes total internal reflection. Anything smaller than this, right, will cause then the light ray to pass through. Okay, so all right, let's now let's move this work onto the side. So now what I want to do here is I now have to figure out a way to relate now, you know, theta one to theta three, and the only way to do that is to relate it to theta two first. So theta 1 and theta 2 are related via Snell's, uh, Snell's equation here, right? The index of refraction of the incident ray multiplied by the sine of the incident angle will equal the index of refraction for the refracted ray multiplied by the sine of the refracted angle. Now, in this particular problem now, I'm considering this to be the incident ray, and this is now the refracted ray. Remember, the terms incident and refracted are always relative to whatever surface you're talking about in which those two rays are articulating, essentially. So this ray, before I called the incident ray, that's because I was talking about this boundary. 
Now this same ray becomes the refracted ray because I'm talking about this boundary, okay? So why don't we now kind of get a feel, why don't we plug in some numbers? So the incident uh, index of refraction here is air again, it's starting in air, so that's just a value of one. Then write sine of theta sub i, you can write theta one if you want it. And now the index of refraction for the refracted ray will be about 1.52, right? And then this is going to be sine now of the refracted ray. Okay, so now if we look at this formula, right, it's not as straightforward as you might think. In other words, you might say, well, as I increase the theta here, you know, the incident angle, does the uh, refracted angle go down, you know? Well, it turns out no, that does not happen. Uh, the reason being is because we got this sine function, all right, that's kind of in our way, so to speak. And sine oscillates and it's a little confusing. So don't, you cannot say that as the incident angle increases, the uh, refracted ray will decrease, all right? We cannot say that. So what you'd wanna do here is you wanna kinda do like a little test for yourself and try to get an idea of what's happening to the refracted ray here, theta two, as the incident ray changes, okay? So why don't we choose, let's just choose a random angle. Why don't we choose like 50 or something? Right, so one times the sine of 50 is gonna equal 1.52 times the sine of then my refracted ray. Divide, so do one times sine of 50, then divide that by 1.52, and then you'll have to take the inverse sine. So it works out that the refracted ray in this case, theta refracted, will be equal to about 30 point, you know, three about. Now, why don't we do this? Let's increase this incident ray, okay? Let's go to 60 now. So one times the sine of 60 will be equal to 1.52 times the sine then of the refracted ray. So you're gonna do the same calculation. You're gonna take one times it by the sine of 60, divide it then by 1.52, and then you gotta take the inverse sine of that to find the angle. So we're getting a value here of 34.7, okay? So notice what's happening. As the angle here is increasing, right, the incident angle, well, the refracted angle is also increasing. Okay, so you gotta be careful. It's also increasing, so wait a minute. So that means that as I increase theta one, meaning as it moves further and further from the normal, right, as I, the angle of attack keeps increasing here, then that means my theta two continually increases as well. And if theta two increases, then what's happening to theta three? Well, theta three is decreasing, right? Because if you notice, this creates like a little triangle. And as this angle inside the triangle, it's a right triangle. So in this, as this angle increases right here, what happens to that angle? Well, it has to decrease, right? So actually what we're showing here is that as I increase now my theta one, my theta two increases and that will produce then a minimum of theta three. So what I wanna do is I wanna see what is the maximum minimum, so to speak, okay? Uh, that uh, I can produce here for theta three. So the maximum here would be if I chose an angle of, what do you think? What would this angle be? What would it create a maximum? Well, 90 degrees, right? So what I'm gonna do is why don't we just erase now one of these numbers in here. So let's erase this. Let's erase now, and that's it really. So let's plug in the value now of 90 in here. So what would that, what would that theta refracted ray become? So the refracted ray here would be uh, one multiplied then by the sine of 90, divided then by 1.52, and then take the inverse sine of that. So it'd be 41.14. Wait a minute, huh, that looks the same as over there. Coincidence, not really, all right? But now keep this in mind, okay? Keep this in mind, that this represents the refracted ray, or in other words, theta two. So how do you now relate theta two's value with theta three's value? Well, you would have to subtract this value from 90 to find theta three. So why don't we do that? So this is basically the maximum theta, this is the maximum theta two value, theta two, theta two max. And this max theta two value will produce a minimum, the minimum value you can possibly obtain of theta three, okay? So theta three then, will be equal to 90 minus now 41.4. So theta three now will become 90 minus then that value and it becomes 48.86.
okay, degrees. So now what we realize is that this is the, uh, this is basically the minimum now angle, okay, that will be produced, right? That's the minimum angle. And what we said before is that this actually represents the critical angle, 41.14 degrees, okay? So what we said was we said that any angle greater than this will produce total internal reflection. Any angle less than this will produce uh, an incident, uh, excuse me, a refracted ray through the uh, air. So what we just proved here is that the absolute minimum angle that can be obtained is 48.86 degrees. But we know that the critical angle here for that uh, you know, second boundary up here is 41.14 degrees. And therefore, there is no possible way to get this angle less than the 41.14, right? So that proves now that there is total internal reflection, that there can never be an incident ray um, that, that will, an angle for an incident ray here that will produce a refracted ray, okay? So that's what that goes and, and proves, basically. So um, I know it's a little confusing. You might still want to work through some of the numbers if you want and try to get a feel. There could be other ways to view this, but I think the easiest way to do it is to find the critical angle for theta 3, then find the minimum angle that can be produced for theta 3, and then you just have to compare now. If this minimum angle uh, that is produced as a result of the original incident ray is greater than the threshold, basically, uh, then you will have total internal reflection no matter what. All right. So guys, thanks so much for tuning in. I appreciate it. I hope this helps. And if it does, like, subscribe, and maybe even tell some of your classmates. We've got a whole bunch of other videos out there. If you're taking chemistry or pre-calculus, please check out some more of our uh, other content. Uh, we solve specific problems from OpenStack. So if even if you don't have the OpenStack's book, download it. It's free. Find a similar problem to the one you're having, and there you go. Problem solved. We'll see you soon. All right. Take care.